Praise the Lord and welcome to the good news of a life without fear. I am Bob Fowler and welcome to the program today. Hey, as I always say on every Friday, thank God, look back. Hey, can you see the favor and the blessing and the provision of God? Can you see your relationship with God getting stronger and you becoming more aware of the promises that God has made to you? You know, I have said for years, that as believers, believers in what Christ has done, the thorough and complete work of the cross, as believers, the greatest thing that I personally feel that I, and I believe that every believer has received, is a relationship with God. Think of that. No matter where you're at, no matter what you're facing, no matter what the pressure, the struggle, the difficulty, the challenge, no matter how high the wall may appear that God is calling you to climb, no matter how large the mountain may be that God is telling you to stand in faith and speak to and declare that it is removed and cast into the sea. It could be a mountain of debt financially. It could be a mountain of physical problems. It could be a spiritual mountain. Whatever the mountain is, did you realize that you have the hope and the the guarantee of God's word because of what Christ has done and the relationship that you have been so wonderfully and beautifully given by God. Now, how do we realize these things? How do we grow? You know, as you look back in your relationship with God, can you see growth? Maybe you feel like, well, since yesterday, I don't feel like I've grown that much. But look back from the time that you've been a believer, you become a believer. Look back at the experiences, the moments, the challenges, those times that you felt like, God, if you don't intervene, it's not going to happen. This could be the big one. This could be the one that takes me out. But as you look back, you see where God has come through. He's watched over his word and he's performed it. You know, the scripture declares that David, from time to time, had to encourage himself in the Lord. What do you think he did? I think he thought back when he was tending his father's sheep, and that lion came, and he thought, ooh, wow, that is a, a ferocious looking animal. I've seen what he does to sheep. And he could very well and easily do that to me. But he put his faith and trust in God, and he believed the Lord. I think he thought back when the bear came and was going to just remove him, thereby removing God's plan, God's purpose, and God's will for his life. But God intervened, gave him wisdom beyond his years and experience, and anointed him to continue pressing past whatever it was that he had to press past. Now, why am I saying that? Because you may not ever face a lion. You may never face a bear but you'll face things that appear they're going to take you out. You're going to face things that appear that they're going to do you in. You're going to face mountains that it looks like they're too high for you to scale and to climb over. You're going to face challenges, walls, obstacles, attacks, that it appears that you are not going to survive them. And so why would we encourage ourselves by looking back? You know, I'm a big one about looking forward, but oftentimes we have to look back and remind ourselves that Jesus, yes, we can agree, he was the same yesterday. I can't deny how he came through in my past. But you know, right now I'm facing challenges. Right now I'm facing difficulties. Right now this one seems like it's bigger than all the other ones combined. My friend, Jesus not only is the same yesterday, but he's the same today. And he wants you to be at peace because the word declares that he will be the same tomorrow. You know, one of the things the enemy wants to steal from you and I is peace. Peace in our mind. Peace that all is well. Peace that God is faithful. Peace that his word still works even facing the challenges that we face today. And so... What did he do to make sure that we would continue our journey and fulfill all of our days on the earth? He sent the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want to talk about for just a few moments today. And before I do, it is Friday. And I want to remind you right back here tonight 
on Faith is the Victory Fellowship Facebook live at 7 p.m. Eastern. We will be back with Friday Night Alive, and it's going to be a live program. And I want to encourage you, please tune in. Send in your comments, your questions, your prayer requests, your praise reports. We want this to be a time tonight that we can communicate back and forth and agree with you in prayer. So I'm looking forward to being back with you tonight. Let's get into this. Being led by the Holy Spirit. Spirit. In Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 16, we read these words For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Now, stop it, stop for just a moment. You know, so often, as I've said for years, the best way to study the Bible is one word at a time and slowly. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Do you know one of the blessings and benefits of you and I being children of God by placing our faith in what Christ has already done is that we now have the Holy Spirit to lead us. Aren't you glad that you have a helper? Aren't you glad that you have a paraclete, one called alongside to comfort you, to help you, to, ge to guide you, to lead you, and to, to, to direct your life? Aren't you thankful that when Jesus departed this world physically, he did not leave us comfortless? He sent the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's job. Now listen, the Holy Spirit is not a thing. He is not an it. He is the third person of the Godhead. He is God himself sent here into the earth to lead you as a believer. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. 2 Timothy 1.7, God's not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so the Holy Spirit is not a spirit that's going to produce uh, fear, anxiety, worry, concern, panic, none of that. He is here as a comforter and a friend to you. You did not receive, again, the spirit of bondage to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry out, Abba, Father, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You know, years ago, long time ago, uh, before I even began pastoring, uh, I was teaching a class and somebody made reference to something that I kind of, uh, I took notice to. And they had mentioned that they believed that there were people that were born again, but just didn't know they were born again. And I quoted this scripture in Romans 8, 16, that his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. We are the children of God. Do you know that as believers, there's an internal witness, no matter what's going on, that you belong to. To God. It's more than a hope. It's more than a prayer. It's more than a dream, a wish, a desire. It is a reality that no matter what is going on around you, you are a child of God. And my friend, let me just stop and say something. That in knowing that you're a child of God and in meditating and thinking on that fact, you come to the realization that if you willing to do just about anything for one of your sons or your daughters because that is a God characteristic that he's put within the heart of every parent, why would we think that God would not be the same? He is your father. You are his child. And no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, he has sent the Holy Spirit to not only remind you of God's faithfulness, God's blessings, and God's provision for and in your life, but he has been sent to remind you that you are one of his children. You're a child of God. There is not a hopeless situation. There is only a circumstance and situation to where God has given you faith to believe in it 
and through it and out of it. Listen, all things work together for the good to those who love the Lord and to those who are the called according to his purpose. There's not one situation that you'll face or that you are facing that God has not known about it, saw it long before it ever arrived at your doorstep, and has not already made a way through it or out of it. So, how do we discover that way? You know, Bob, how do I find my way around it or through it or over it or under it? How do I get past this situation? Ah, the Holy Spirit is available for you and I to invite him to lead us and direct. You know, one thing I have, I've heard this for years, but I've discovered on a very personal level that the Holy Spirit will not just barge in. He won't burst in. He won't come in uninvited. You're going to have to invite him. Holy Spirit, I need you to lead me today. I need you to direct me today. I need you to teach me today. I need, for, when I first became born again, when I first trusted Christ as my Savior, I developed a habit that every time I would open the scripture, I would say a prayer. And that prayer would be something like this. Holy Spirit, I need you to open this word to reveal the truth of this word so that I can understand this word. And every single time, without fail, the Holy Spirit would show me something, would allow me to discover something that I had not seen before. Why is that? Well, because number one, he is available and accessible today but he will not come in uninvited. You're going to have to ask him. So that it's important that you make that a part of your daily prayer. Not only when you read scripture, but Holy Spirit, lead me today. Guide me today. Direct me today. Show me, reveal to me your plan, God's purpose, his will for my life, even in the midst of of these circumstances. In John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17, we, re, we, we read these words, and I will pray the Father, this is Jesus speaking, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth. Now he's talking about the Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and he shall be in you. Think of that now. The Holy Spirit is with the life of the believer everywhere you go, no matter where it is, no matter how challenging or no matter how victorious, the Holy Spirit is present. He's not a million miles away. He doesn't have to hop on a plane to get to where you are. There's no delay. No, he is a very present help in your time of need. And so the question would bear asking, why don't we invite the Holy Spirit to help us, to lead us, to direct us any more than we do? Well, I guess the number one reason would be the enemy does not want you to do that. Satan does not want you to develop that type of relationship with God through the Holy Spirit to where you depend upon him as your counselor, your confidant, and the one that you go to for your advice. Why? Because he's only going to speak the will of the Father to you. He's only going to direct you according to God's plan and God's will for your life. So, what is he going to do? Well, he's going to do his very best to either wear you out or to hold you back and prevent you from having that type of relationship. The other reason would be through ignorance. My people perish, God's people perish for lack of knowledge. So often, we just don't know. And if we know we're not in the habit of of making him our first call. You know, people are interesting. Sometimes they'd rather talk to a person than talk to God. Now listen, I'm not saying we don't need one another. We do. 
I'm not, t I'm not saying the word declares that in the multitude of counselors, there is wisdom. And I would add, as long as those counselors have wisdom, but we need one another. We encourage one another. We build one another up. Hebrews tells us we're not to forsake the assembling together with brothers and sisters in the Lord. There is, there is a blessing when we begin to communicate, one to confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. I mean, we need, I'm not saying that we don't need the counsel, the help, the assistance, a conversation with somebody. However, when that begins to replace our dependency upon our number one counselor, and that is the Holy Spirit. He's here to help you. He's here to lead you. He's here to assist you. No matter what it is you're facing, going through, no matter what the challenge may be, the Holy Spirit is available and accessible to you. Why? Because you're so good? No, because of what Jesus has done. And one of the greatest things he wants you to discover is that is the beauty and, and the benefit of of the relationship that you have received with God through what Christ has done. I wanna pray for you today. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for the Holy Spirit, that no matter where we're at, no matter what we're facing, no matter how difficult the challenge may appear or be or feel like, I thank you that the Holy Spirit is present. And right now, I pray for that one that's either watching by live stream or on the rebroadcast that you would minister to them. Make them aware of your presence. Make them aware of the life that you've chosen for them. Make them aware that even though they can't see a way, that they can trust you. That we don't have to see a way in order to trust you. And so I pray for that special grace and that strength and that mercy to be upon that person that is just pressed against the wall, doesn't know what they're doing. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Well, I pray the program has been a blessing and a benefit to you. If it has, would you take a moment and share it with your friends and your loved ones on Facebook and your other social media platforms? Hey, I'm looking forward to being back here tonight with you at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Faith is the Victory Fellowship. I want you to know that I love you. God loves you. And as always, my friend, Never, ever forget, he is faithful. God bless you.